Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a look at Bodhi Linux. I have looked at this one in the past. I generally have a quick review of this about once a year. So this is a Ubuntu with a window manager instead of a full desktop environment. So this is a fork of the Enlightenment desktop, and it is called Moksha. And uh, the Bodhi Linux team basically takes an Ubuntu build and drops this window manager on top of it. So what we get here is just a very simple Windows manager with Ubuntu. Very interesting. Some people may like that application. Very minimal as far as what it can give you. And there's actually a few different options. So if you head on over to the download page, we have a standard release. Now, when you see standard release, you want to think minimal. This is the one that I downloaded. It has nothing. In fact, this is so minimal, it doesn't even have the control panel. Um, I went ahead and installed the control panel. I also installed Firefox and um, Thunderbird just as a means of testing things. The HWE is basically the standard with the latest hardware configuration. Configuration. So if you are running some brand new hardware, this one is actually going to give you some of the latest. I believe what it might actually do is it might roll the kernels on you. I don't remember for sure. The app pack is more of your traditional build where it will have a lot of software installed. And then the legacy is, of course, for 32-bit. If you're unsure which one to download, they do have a wiki. They do have a lot of good information on this, uh, on this desktop. So if you head on over here, of course, the standard basically does not push kernel updates, and this is basically very minimal, allows you to install what you want. So if you're looking for, you know, and a lot of people running a Windows manager don't want any extra software. You want the very, very bare minimums. The HWE, uh, so this is for, um, this is for 60, uh, 64-bit, of course, and it is about catching up with the newest hardware technologies. If your process, uh, process is processor is capable of running 64-bit OS, and you want kernel updates and newer hardware support, this is the one you have. So they're actually running uh, kernel 5.1. Uh, I'm sorry, 5.1 is the Bodhi release. Features kernel 5.3 uh, on, uh, on the download. The legacy, of course, is 32. Now the app pack, this is the one that is basically more like a standard live key or uh, just a, uh, you know, what, what some of you Windows Manager guys might call bloat, the bloat pack with package. You have your terminology, Firefox. So I think the first, okay, the first ones down to here actually are on it. I think uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control is also on it. Mint Update Manager is not on my current version. Even Swami System Panel is not on here. Uh, LibreOffice is not. VLC is not. GIMP is not. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that's here. I may or may not have printer or Samba support. I didn't actually have a look. Uh, but anyway, I am running the standard, which is basically the minimal build. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to jump on over to the, um, to the build, and we will have a look at what it looks like. Again, this is your more minimal build. So if you want things like updates, hey, the Mint Manager is a cool manager, you know, update manager. That's, that would be neat to have. So it might be worth actually doing another video just looking at the uh, app pack version of this as well. But this is going to be the standard. All right, so here we are on the desktop. So again, very minimal build. Uh, your right click does nothing on the desktop. Your left click is gonna bring up your menu. So under accessories, we have LeafPad, Vim, preferences, graphics, internet. Um, I added Firefox, I added Thunderbird. Everything else that's on here is what they gave me. Uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control. Now, uh, the system settings tools here, um, I actually had to install uh, system settings, <laughs> uh, which was interesting. You know, I need to install a settings panel on the build that we have. We do have a couple themes. Uh, we only have two. They're both pretty ugly. Um, but uh, depending on which one you want, uh, I'll just go ahead and go back to, I do like the green one better if we're going with, uh, if we're going with the panels that we have. So here we can do some configurations. Here's about the theme. We can restart the desktop there. Uh, wallpaper editor, you know, we can, we only have one in the system. Although the theme itself does have a different wallpaper as well. So for whatever reason, that happens to be the case. All right. Now we have, uh, here's modules. Now the shelves are what they call panels. So if you want to adjust your panels, adjust your shelves, 
Uh, that's kind of what they are called. So this guy here, if we have a look at our contents, we have our clipboard, you can see. We have our clock, obviously. Uh, we have our um, it's an eye bar. I think the eye bar is this guy here. The pager is your uh, different desktop builds like that. Uh, let's see. We do have the mixer. We have the start. Is that this one? I think that's the mixer. System screen and various tasks. All right, so you, if you wanted to add another panel, you could put one at the top. You could actually edit. I think you can edit this panel to uh, move it around. So you can uh, uh, you can go ahead and put it above everything, below Windows, below everything. Allow Windows to overlap it. You can set its position here. Uh, so if you wanted to do something like that, you could you know throw the panel up there. Uh, the width of it is, uh, I believe that's over, let's see, there is a width around here somewhere. Let's have a look at some of the uh, styles. There you go, there's a nice transparent invisible panel if you want something like that. All right, translucent. Looks like uh, some of the styles are not there. There's auto hide. We can show it on all desktops. All right, so there's your uh, panel settings there. Now we do have an App Center. The App Center is just a web-based application, and what I found is the um, the web tool or the the web browser on this actually just doesn't work. No matter what page I go to, all I get is a blank screen. So that's not particularly useful, but if you take this guy, I'm guessing maybe if we uh, change the uh, default browser over to um, Firefox, it would work. If I just go ahead and copy that, though, and uh, boot up our Firefox application, Let's go ahead and do that. And then when Firefox loads up, we'll just go ahead and uh, go to the website, which is the um, the application center. So I'm never a huge fan of with uh, about application centers built inside of the uh, as a website. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, Play Linux, SuperTux. Let's see. There's there's a solitaire, but this is how it works. You need to it'll pop this guy up. You'll have to open the link, which should prompt us for our super secret password. That's definitely not one two three. And then it's just going to go ahead and run the installation process through the website. Again, though, the basic default web that they give us doesn't actually work for me. It might work for you. It's just it's just not working for me. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at applications, games. Now we have our solitaire game there. All right, so in this quick build here, we don't have any um, anything to update the system. We don't have anything to install software so other than that App Center. So if you do want to install something else, just kind of boot up a terminal and uh, start doing your apt-y stuff. So if I just do a sudo apt update, this is probably how I just go ahead and manage it here. So it looks like we can you know, run some updates, which we're not going to do right now. All right, so there's our network connections up there in the top corner there. Not sure if that's always been up there, and I just missed it. All right, so as far as everything else, if we go into our settings panel, this is the settings panel that we have. So wallpapers, application themes. Hey, look at that. I completely did not see these application themes in here before. Let's go ahead and have a look at some of these. See what they're going to look like. Uh, we might have to pull up a application first. Let's do. Let's just pull up the solitaire game. Yeah. I'm guessing we might actually have something that's uh, overriding in the. I guess that's GTK applications, though, isn't it? No, yeah, that's that makes a difference. Here's your icons. See if we have one for um, not seeing one for non-GTK. All right, basic themes. We only have two base, uh, built in here. Here's your basic colors. I've not been able to figure out how to get our colors running. 
Uh, let's see here. Let's just look at this guy here. In theory, we should be able to add in custom colors. But I've not been able to figure out exactly where the custom colors are adding in yet. In theory, we have the options. Here's your fonts. Uh, borders, we can go with borderless. We can have a variety of different size borders. We can set trans, uh, transitions, scaling. Here's your startup screens. So you have a couple different startup screens. I believe this was an older one. This is the one we get now, which I didn't actually show you guys on startup just because I did need to go ahead and um, set the size to the screen size to full screen. Here's your applications. So we can set favorites. We can set the iBar applications are down here. So if you want to add something or remove something, you can do that over there. Here's your default applications. Okay, so it is actually setting Firefox to the default now. It still loads up the uh, the other web in the other application. Desktop environments. All right, we can uh, start KDE services or GNOME services on boot. Here's your screens, input settings, window settings menus, configurations. So you have a lot of different options inside of here, but not overwhelming. So again, the, the chief selling point of this guy here is if you are looking for a window manager and uh, on the Ubuntu build, then this is probably going to be one of your best bets, at least one of your easiest bets, unless you're going to want to boot up a uh, Ubuntu server and then just add whatever desktop you want to it. So this guy's going to uh, function out pretty well for you. All right, so there is our brief look at the Bode Linux um, build, the very new one that was just released, 15.1. And uh, overall, my, my take is it's not for a new user. So if you're just switching over to Linux and you're like, hey, let's try this out, it's not going to be user-friendly. It's not going to be nearly as intuitive. But if you are looking for an Ubuntu with a window manager, this could be a good logical uh, one to go with unless like I said Ubuntu server with uh, you know with manually installing whatever window manager you want to use is probably an option for you as well but this one gets you a couple options out of the box I like the very minimal option versus the full desktop ready to go option we also have one with the latest kernels on it, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of good uh, good reasons to go with this one uh, to save a little bit of time, get everything set up. So that's kind of my take on Bodhi. Uh, let me know your take. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you've not already, hit me a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the video, whichever one you want, and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.